question. How do we call him? He gave us a signal. What up, Gotham Guardians and Arkham Adversaries, Stormtroopers? Happy May the 4th Day. This is your boy, Trey of the Batch, and we are live once again from a galaxy far, far away. Deep in a bat cave, though. <laughs> As always, guys, before we begin, I must bring in the best co-host I could ever ask for, a super bro, Corey. Um, 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 he muted himself. <laughs> you muted uh, him. <laughs> what's up, everyone? How are we doing today? Hello there. Hmm. Hello there. <laughs> this How's is it going? Oh, happy May the 4th. Happy May the 4th. I can't wait for Revenge of the 5th. Oh, hurtful. Mm. Hurtful. You've always been a Sith person since. No, not really. Well, I it was Sith. Darth Witcher. Vader was always your guy, though. I did like Darth Vader, but who was my guy? Uh, Darth Maul, wasn't it? No, well, no. Hans, Han, no, uh, Han Solo. Uh, but I know when when we we're little, I God, no? for, uh, for Halloween, I was Obi Wan. Yeah. Yes, I did. That I did do Darth yeah. Vader that one year, but Han Solo has always been my guy. Yeah, that's fair. That's and fair. when they killed him, then I joined the dark side. Oh, I see how you, you are. You don't know the power of the dark side. <laughs> Jesse Al, what's up? <laughs> and then after that, I became This Is The Way. This the is one the one, way. The one of one. Mm -hmm. You know, I had a... This I had is a, the May. This is the May. <laughs> this is the May. Guys, yeah. it's so good to see everyone in the chat. How's it going? Eric Patterson. Corey, who, <laughs> who all do we have here today? Let me uh, get re-situated here. What's up, everybody? Yeah, we're doing good. Get the hat back on. Yeah, we got a lot of people out there today, buddy. We got, uh, let's see, Joker's Wild. What's up, Joker's Wild? Batwoman, Oracle's Clock Tower, Nine Lives in Hell here. Mistress of Mayhem, Bat Fanatic, Restore the Snyderverse guy. We have Trevor H., Multiverse of Snyder Cuts. Up. We have uh, Dadpool. We have Bat Dan in the house. Eric Patterson, Red Hooded Outlaw, The Butler, Beyond the Night, South Cali Guy, Jesse Allen. Am I missing anybody? Yes, I am. Carrie Kelly, what is up? What and is up, Carrie Kelly? Yeah. How's it going, y'all? And we got a lot of people out there celebrating. Lucas Ironside, if I didn't mention Lucas him. Lucas Ironside, my man. Uh, we got uh, a lot of people saying uh, Super Bro Corey is a Wookiee. May the 4th be with you, guys. May the 4th be with you. Uh, one person said, uh, oh, Matt said Jar Jar Binks is my guy. In all fairness, I didn't mind Jar Jar Binks like many people did. I was a kid then. I mean, I loved the prequels. Corey, I know you grew up mostly on the original trilogy. Yep. That was your film when you were growing up. For me, when I was a kid, though, it was the prequels. It was episode one, two, and three. And I have a, a huge love for those movies. Like, granted, the original trilogy, you can't beat them, right? But 
I don't understand the hate that the new, well, the prequels get the new trilogy. I, I don't, to me, I don't even look at the new trilogy to me. Seven, eight, nine doesn't even exist. I hated them that much. Uh, episode eight, uh, the last Jedi was the first film. I actually like was really considering getting up and leaving the theater. Yeah. Yeah. No. And I actually, I actually did enjoy one, two and three, uh, episodes one, two and three as well. Um, Obviously, four, five, six was where it's at. Out mm-hmm. of the one, two, three series, the third one is my favorite. <laughs> the young okay. ones, the young ones striking them down. I, I personally <laughs> love Darth Vader striking them down. It was good stuff. In a word, uh, hurtful. Hurtful. <laughs> it's not like Halo, though. I guess Halo took it from them. Halo, them Halo t- took a little bit from Star Wars. There, they, yeah. they're definitely like F them kids. F them younglings. <laughs> Hashtag F them younglings for May the 4th tonight. Hashtag F them younglings. <laughs> <laughs> guys, it is so good to see you here. Happy oh. May the 4th, as we said earlier. Uh, are you guys fandom menace? Yes. Today we are. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I absolutely love Star Wars, which actually to have like a quick question with you guys real quick, as you know, the Bat Channel has expanded to far beyond Batman, DC. I mean, we've done Jurassic Park content for a long time. We've done godzilla content for a long time uh would you guys be cool with us doing star wars content as well probably not probably not yeah. Pe- people aren't down with that they're like stay in your role guys well, it's funny we were talking about it at work uh today you know um there's people you know star wars fans hate each other sometimes you know you either you like seven eight and nine or you hated seven eight nine or you hated one two and three you love four, five, and six. It's it's just all over the place. And I tell you what, I was worried about, really worried about the new uh, Star Wars uh, content, uh, especially after seeing seven, eight, and nine. Oh yeah, on Disney um, Plus, all the all the shows they're doing on there. But they're although, all, no, 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 I'm t- I was you know we just saw seven, eight, nine, and I was really worried. But then the Mandalorian came out, and I was like, hmm, I'm a freaking Mandalorian. Weapons are my religion. This is the way. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? Uh, man, I agree. Like, yeah, it, episode, the whole new trilogy, I didn't mind seven. Seven wasn't horrible. I think they should have tweaked a few story things that would have made it a better film rather than just a remake of mm-hmm. episode four. But in terms of like, was it horrible? No. Eight, awful. Nine, they were just trying so hard to fix episode eight that it, it wasn't even its own mm-hmm. thing anymore um you know so but disney plus like you said Corey, is been killing it with mandalorian i didn't mind book of boba i thought it was I a bit watch that one yet. you haven't seen book of boba yet Corey, yep. bro i know you're really gonna appreciate this you have disney plus now wink wink don't tell the wife <laughs> you go watch it go watch it because you need to because we're, here's the sad part about the book of boba fett it was it was good but not because of boba fett it was mm-hmm. good for other reasons that basically had nothing to do with boba uh so you know I, I, while i boba fett's like one of my favorite characters uh, i thought they did him a little bit dirty they kind of nerfed him a little bit um but it's still if you're a star wars fan it's worth watching i enjoy it especially for the other stuff that you get and i don't want to spoil mm-hmm. anything for you mm-hmm. but Corey, we we talked about this on our halo show where like you know one of the characters is really annoying and we kind of just wish she went away ahsoka you know from the whole star wars saying i don't think you've watched any of the like animated stuff have you um a little bit with you uh that's about it okay clone wars is dope you need that's to watch what, clone wars that's what uh, i hear I I avoided it for the longest time too because I loved I think Cartoon Network had their own like it was almost like anime uh cartoon version uh of their their story for Clone Wars and I dug that. I really liked that one and then when I heard saw that what they were doing with this other Clone Wars thing I was like I ain't going to watch that and I regret it because I watched all of it a year ago during especially like during the lockdown of the pandemic and stuff like that. I got through all of Clone Wars and I was like, damn, I love this stuff. The Bad Batch, like this, this is all good. Like the, long, the universe, so good. How long would it take me to binge watch Clone Wars? A while. It, it's like quite a few seasons, but okay. I'll tell you, it's totally worth it. Especially they went all out on the final episode, but you get a lot of lore. And not only that, like 
some because some... if we're gonna do this, one thing I would like to do is I would like to follow the path of uh, the Star Wars uh, epic per se, kind of like how I enjoyed the Godfather epic. Let's do a Star Wars epic. Let's start off. Uh, I'm assuming uh, episode one. And then it goes into where we watch episode two and then jump into the Clone Wars uh, yeah. uh, movie uh, shows and then mm -hmm. uh, go into the third or is, do you go into Rebels after that? Like, like we, well, we then have it'd to be like a little bit of Bad Batch. Yeah. Uh, wait, hold on. Oh, no. Yeah. You would watch the third one before you get to the fourth one. That's when all the crazy shit happens with where you need to watch yeah let's uh let's figure it out for sure i'm i'm certainly down to do that we should review it at the end of each uh season uh as well our thoughts on it and uh i, I everybody uh is uh a pretty much uh down for it i would do the star wars content tons of yeses and stuff like that so does that mean we started off today then trey with it being i think we should because we're seeing Everyone all for it, guys. We're, we're just going to start because my favorite character of all time of any like Star Wars, like it's not a competition for me other than Chewbacca. Chewbacca is right there with this dude. Obi-Wan Kenobi has always been my favorite Star Wars character of all time. I don't even know why. It was just maybe as a kid. I think it was really because Corey and my other brother, they chose like my parents got when Phantom Menace was coming out and we were seeing in theaters for the first time. I was little, I think it was like six or something like that. And our parents got us these little like these wristbands that you slapped on your wrist and it would wrap around it. And they got colors of certain people. And for some reason, I wanted Qui Gon Jinn, but green was my brother's favorite color. I think it was because Qui Gon Jinn had a beard and I wanted a beard, dude. Um, but Corey picked Darth Maul, <laughs> go figure. Uh, our other brother picked Qui-Gon Jinn and I got Obi-Wan Kenobi. And at first I was disappointed, but watching that movie and seeing how cool Obi-Wan Kenobi was. And not only that, the fact that he survives and takes out Darth Maul, I was like, that's my man. So ever since Obi-Wan Kenobi. Though? Yeah, absolutely. Did bro. he take out Darth Maul? He did. Well, okay. Did well, he though? <laughs> do you know, do you know some things? Hmm. Okay, so so you know enough to know that Darth Maul doesn't mm. Mm, die, but uh, you know Obi Wan Kenobi has always been my favorite Star Wars character. And when I heard my man Ewan McGregor is coming back to play Kenobi again, like Mandalorian was cool, Boba Fett was cool, all the other Star Wars stuff they're making is cool, but this had me hyped like no other. So I heard because of May the Fourth. They came out with a trailer today. So I figured right here live with you guys, we would do a Star Wars Obi-Wan Kenobi official trailer reaction. So we hope you have your headphones ready. You're ready to go with us. All right, Corey, you ready? You know I'm ready. I'm so excited for this. I love Obi-Wan. All right, coming down in three, two, one. Hello there. Stay hidden. Or we will not survive. Yeah. Leave us alone. When the time comes, he must be trained. Like you trained his father. Oh, cold. You still want Kenobi. He's gone. Maybe you've been looking in the wrong places. I want every moment of <laughs> bounty hunter to squeeze him. You can't wait, Obi Wan! <laughs> Oh, that's so cool. Oh, that's so cool. 
I, I mean, I, I, oh. you were ready to start. I knew, I knew Darth Vader was coming back, obviously, because he heard Hayden Christensen was going to return. I, I was uh, super curious about that too, and I did hear a good point brought up at uh, work today. Technically, in Episode Four, he says, "So we meet again," you know, and in this, they kind of obviously they're going to be kind of going back and forth with each other again, still. Well, yeah, I mean, it, it, he never says when was the last time they met. Like, we assumed after seeing episode three that it was Mustafar, right? Uh, but clearly they must meet each other again. Uh, who knows why? I mean, it looks like Obi-Wan didn't keep quiet after all this time that he got involved. Uh, and maybe he realizes after this, uh, you know, whatever goes on in this particular event that he he knows he must keep quiet, that he must keep to himself and not... Um, answer the call for you know to save mm -hmm. people and stuff like that but you got young luke you know his, son, uh, his uncle owen in there and like the inquisitors uh from Corey. you seen them uh partly from the the star wars game uh yep. i'm totally spacing the name is it jedi fallen order there you go thank you okay cool see i i've been playing a lot of star wars games lately especially the old jedi academy uh that was on the first xbox i beat like republic commando recently uh, so I'm my all my games are jumbled up right now. But Jedi Fallen Order, which that would be cool to see. Um, oh gosh, uh, Ray, who who is the character in Jedi Fallen Order? It's like, uh, is it Cal? Yeah, uh, it, it is. And I'm curious. Uh, I know they were talking about uh, Jedi Fallen Order two. Um, yeah, is expected to be revealed at the Star Wars celebration near the Cal end of this Cal month. Kestis, yeah, yeah. So his, his name. They're gonna. They are gonna be doing a uh, two, but uh, we should get a major announcement on that uh, uh, end yeah. of this month. But yeah, I think that trailer looks amazing. I think Kenobi is going to be a fantastic show. I think it's going to hit you in all the fields, just like the Mandalorian uh, did uh, as well. I, I'm so excited for it. It's just, it's going to be, here's what r also really has me excited. While um, I think his name is uh, Ludwig Gornson, who has done like the Mandalorian music and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you've heard Corey, but John Williams came back to write the theme for Obi-Wan Kenobi. Really? So Yay. He, didn't, he didn't do all of it, but he did some for that. And uh, I just can't wait to hear his Obi-Wan theme. Can uh, yeah, that sounds fantastic. Uh, man, I, I'm looking forward to it, Trey. I'm looking forward to it too. And we, we hope you guys, uh, as we're going to clip this for our trailer reaction video. So I'll just kind of finish it up from our live stream. But uh, if you're just watching for the trailer reaction, as always, it helps support our channel when you like, share, subscribe, and you hit that notification bell so you never miss an episode. And uh, keep tuning in for uh, the Bat Channel for more Star Wars content because mm. I, I think we might that might be our next show that we review each episode as it comes out. Uh, so I'm flipping freaking excited. Can't wait for Obi Wan Kenobi. Sure. Before yes. we get too far away from Star Wars, I, I do want to share this interesting uh, story on my way to work today. And okay, uh, I, I'm going to get a little. We're going to go into not necessarily uh, Star Warsy completely it's going to be more sciencey uh, uh as well so we're going to bring a, a new thing into it okay i'm on my way into work today yeah. I, I, and i'm going to share my screen with you here um i was listening to the radio crazy uh, and all crazy 1079 <laughs> and uh they were talking about oh it's you know star wars day may the fourth be with you and then they were talking about uh this crazy all this crazy space stuff lately and okay. uh, the uh, U.S. Sun is also reporting it, but there was a YouTube video that was supposedly on NASA and, uh, you know, UFO sightings daily or something along those lines. But they were talking about how it gets all, um, how with the Star Wars theme and everything like this, I guess just the other day, April 21st, 2022, uh, the NASA uh, feed was going uh, of the sun. It was, you know, the satellite pictures yeah. were of the sun. And a black cube 
was uh, appeared to be emerging from the sun. Now, uh, they're supposedly the Borg. <laughs> so they were playing it off as a freaking Star Wars thing, but I was like, uh, "That's the Borg. Borg. That's the Borg coming for us." Come you know? on like, now, like that's Star Trek, not Star Wars. So like, I, I was like for, yelling at the yelling at the radio on my way into work today, but like, I'm, you know, supposedly right after the uh, square emerged, the feed on the NASA YouTube page said, oh, this one is closed off. It's uh, it, we need to uh, repair uh, the, uh, the the feed and they, they completely shut it down. That In portion. other words, it's actual aliens that the Borg is actually coming now, up on our planet. <laughs> if you do some searching, you can see that there has been some other squares and stuff like that. But to show you it, it, it like it, it's pretty interesting yeah let me see like, this it's our show just got educational all of a hey sudden guys, this is just amazing and it's kind of mind-blowing now look at that is crazy what in the world man we're gonna need will smith and um and um tommy lee Tommy Lee Jones, yeah. right? <laughs> so, so that that was it. But it, it just cracked me up today because don't get me wrong, I love Star Wars, I love it a lot. Yeah. Uh, but when they're like, oh yeah, this is a uh, totally a, a Star Wars theme uh, article that we talked about, I was like, no man, that's the freaking bore, Gil. <laughs> that's depressing. How? Uh, <laughs> that's how depressing crazy, that they feel. You know? Like, wh why not? Let's uh, let's uh, get twenty twenty really wild up. You they know? they see a cube flying by the the sun, and they're just like, I have a bad feeling about this. <laughs> Dude, I got a bad feeling about it. Seeing that square come out. Hey, you know, we'll, we'll see. I guess if we get invaded soon, it'll be crazy and enough. I'm glad. I'm glad that uh, the chat knew right away. You know, Trevor H immediately said the Borg. Dad said, "Is it the Borg?" And yes, Star Trek is better than Star Wars any day of the week. And twice That's a, I love both. Can people just love both? Why are you like you old fans are constantly trying to put us apart? <laughs> I I both. I kind of agree with him, uh, maybe a little bit. But don't do uh, that, Corey. We're friends. Uh, one of my favorite <laughs> pictures and uh, of uh, me and you uh, is on uh, uh, Facebook somewhere, and it's uh, uh, we're at. We just got done uh, listening to Gene Kranz, which, if you don't know who uh, Gene, Gene Kranz, Kranz yeah. is, he was uh, the flight director for uh, the Apollo missions. Uh, he's, uh, um, if you watch uh, Apollo 13, he's the guy uh, wearing uh, the vest, the kind of the, the white vest. His wife would always make him a new vest for every um, uh, mission. Um, so um, uh, we had uh, just got uh, done uh, watching him uh, in uh, uh, a, he do a, he did a presentation. It was for Apollo 11th, uh, 50th, 50th or 60th anniversary. No, it was, it was 50th, 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 yeah. yeah, 50th uh, anniversary. It, it, it was absolutely amazing. So very cool really to cool. meet. Um, but uh, inside the Rocky Man uh, Museum of was it Air and uh, it, it, it was a, a museum for. Um, it, well, they had airplanes and everything like that in there. Um, can't remember the exact name. They had a uh, life-size X-Wing in there. And I was obviously wearing my uh, Moon Finders, you know, Finders Keepers shirt, but we were uh, standing in front of the <laughs> uh, X-Wing. And uh, you were like, let's get a picture together, Trey. So I put my arm around you. And then I went like this in front of, uh, and just the look of disappointment on your face and the frustration that it gave so many people um it's still amusing to this day like you said like trey has said uh i am a bit of a troll and when i dropped up uh 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 that in the uh, picture it was absolutely hilarious but yeah man look at look at people uh uh people knew gene kranz yeah yeah, dude, Gene, Gene Kranz, that was uh, an incredible experience to to meet him. But of course, Corey had to ruin it with a uh, freaking the Spock live long and prosper in front of an X wing, dude. Frick yeah, <sighs> man! And Gene Kranz is literally the coolest person in the world. Uh, oh, he's he, a badass. He's still he's, a badass. To this he's day. still a badass. You know, go no go. 
Yeah, I, he's like, we're go, go to Mars. We're wasting time, and it's like, I love you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that you know, and isn't that funny? That's what a lot of them say. You know, if you uh, listen to any of the astronauts who have been to uh, uh, the moon, they uh, are a very big proponent for Mars Direct. So they want to go yeah. straight to Mars, not deal with with the moon again. But uh, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, that's, that's cool. Yeah, pretty pretty sweet. What up, Ryan? How are you doing, buddy? Good to Ryan, see you. Ryan, my Happy man, here. it's good to see you, Ryan. We were just uh, doing talking about some Star Wars stuff. So happy May the Fourth to you uh, as we begin our show now. As we've just been kind of kind of go to Mars out. and guys, leave Matt Damon. Go to Mars and leave Matt Damon. Oh, <laughs> do you remember what Jimmy we Kimmel ate? would like that? What's that? Do you remember what breakfast we had at the Gene Kranz? Uh, uh, breakfast uh, uh, talk and everything like that. I don't recall. We had the uh, standard uh, astronaut breakfast. Does that give you a clue? I'm guessing eggs. <laughs> steak and eggs. So right before uh, they uh, take off the last big <laughs> breakfast that they eat is steak and eggs. So Okay. I, you know. I don't recall. you. Of course, you always remember that kind of stuff. <laughs> I don't, you know, but... Uh, man, it was, it was a great experience, but guys, as we start our show tonight, as always, especially because this was kind of like a last minute show once again. Uh, so I didn't have a lot of time to kind of promote and, you know, do all the crazy stuff they do to get people, you know, noticing our show tonight. It helps us out so, so, so much when you guys smash that, like you share this video and you subscribe to our channel, hit the notification bell so you never miss an episode. Get all your friends into the live chat because the more people we have in the live chat, the more fun it is. I like to watch Corey panic and be overwhelmed with comments. I've seen it a few, you know, some uh, quite a few times recently, and it's just fun to watch in the background to <laughs> see him go like, oh god, <laughs> there's a lot of people tonight. So, guys, get your friends in the live chat, let them know about our channel. And if you feel like supporting us even a, just a little bit more. You can do it through Super Chat. Super Chat is such a great way to let us know you're enjoying our content and that you just want to support us and that you want to help us get to that next step. You want us to improve our equipment, you know, get new cameras, lights, all that fun stuff, you know, getting, renewing our subscriptions to things like StreamYard where we do our shows. It helps us out so much when you guys do that. And we appreciate the support and we like to show you that we appreciate our support by playing like nice little clips, you know, to, to give you guys a good laugh, you know, something. Hello there. <laughs> Hello there. Uh, so super chats go a long way, especially if there's a question you have or a topic you want us to discuss, do it through super chat because as Corey gets more busy, he's going to be selecting who to bring up their topics and stuff like that. So super chat is the way to go. Thanks. <laughs> Corey, you ready to begin our, our show, buddy? Absolutely. And uh, thanks for Deadpool for the uh, uh, Wings, Wings of the, the Rockies Museum. That's wonderful here in Colorado. It's a great museum. Guys, all right. So as we begin our show, so this one I wanted to talk about because this one, this one hurts. Mm -hmm. This one hurts. Uh, as some of you may have heard, Neil Adams passed away recently. And uh, that one really kind of crushed me. Uh, partly because, uh, and super bro, Corey can attest to this, you know, that was my first ever comic, uh, Corey, when I just, I think it was literally after Batman V Superman. That's like, I was always a Batman fan of the films and the TV show, but in terms of the comics, I had never read a comic in my life. Uh, and after Batman V Superman, I was like, man, I really want to get into comics. Like, I, I, but I don't know anything about it. I don't know comic book stores, anything like that. Well, lucky us here in Colorado, nearby our house, Hall of Justice Comics and Collectibles opened up and Corey happened to stop by and asked our guy, John, who was like, hey, my brother really loves Batman. What should like, it's almost his birthday. What should I get him? You know, what's a good comic to start him on? And the comic he had happened to be Batman 251, the famous Neil Adams cover in Denny O'Neill book that uh, Corey got for me. And that was my first ever comic. Fell in love with it. Uh, first print too. Oh my God, Corey, I don't know how much you spent on this theme. Uh, it was a glass case one. Yeah, it was a glass case comic that our <laughs> guy had. And it, it started my whole comic book trajectory of just being really immersed in the Batman comic book world. All those boxes you see over there and, the comics you see behind me started all with this comic and, you know, with hollow justice comics and collectibles. And 
one year in 2019, I had the awesome opportunity to meet Neil Adams. Uh, and he was just the sweetest guy in the entire world. Super, super talented, but it was just nice that he had a long line of people who wanted to see him and to sign stuff. And he, he took the time to like, talk to me for like 10 minutes, you know, or like 15. It was, it was, it felt like a while. Like I was honestly surprised. I felt like I was trying to like, Oh my God, I don't want to take up all of his time. He has this giant line, but he, he like kept saying like, no, like t tell me about this and stuff like that. And when I finally gave him my comic to sign it, he kind of just stared at it for a while and just looked at it. And he's like, wow, this is actually a pretty good copy. <laughs> he's like first print. I was like, yeah. And he's like, he's like, I just got to know, did, did you read it? And I said, yes, sir. And he was like, good. That's what it's for. And I don't know why you probably saw my Facebook post about this. I don't know why that made such a big impression on me, but it did. It was just kind of that moment of like the people around me who had comics, they, they collected them. It wasn't something you read that you just collected them. They collected these, you know, famous comics and then just put it up on their wall. And while there's nothing wrong with that, it just kind of reminded me like, this is dude, this is someone's art. This is someone's passion. This is someone's hard work, blood, sweat, and tears and years of putting in effort to, to create these beautiful things and teamwork, you know, through the writers, the artists and everyone involved in the comics. And it just made a big impression on me when he said that. Uh, and I just, it was just wonderful to me. And he was a sweet guy, just a true legend uh and i'm very sad that he's gone like literally i was i was in tears when i found out uh, i had to like stop working for a second and was just like damn because literally i was watching his he did an instagram live sale every week basically and I, I would join that and just like say what up neil you know and stuff like that it was just true honor to have had a few moments with him and to now have one of his famous comics on my wall signed i i, I told my brother i was like I'm going to read it one last time for Neil. And then I'm going to go get it CGC and keep it forever. And a lot of people are asking me like, Oh dude, are you going to sell it because it's probably going to worth something now. I'm like, no, that's my first comic. I can't, I can't get rid of it. That means too much to me. Um, so very sad. Uh, rest in peace. Neil Adams condolences to his friends and family. Hope you guys are, are find peace in this difficult time, but I'm, I'm sad. He's gone. It, that one definitely hurt for sure. I actually go back and forth on what she said to you in the sense that you're, you're going to read it one more time and then get it CGC sealed up. Uh, because with what she said, you know, his comics are meant to be enjoyed. And it definitely seems like a lot of times in the comic world or any type of, you know, art or anything like that, we get in this um, mode of, oh, we can use this as an investment. We can uh, uh, make a quick dollar off of this, you know, and um, not appreciate it for what, what it really is, you know? Yeah. And uh, like dad said here, uh, you, you have to take the time and enjoy, uh, enjoy it and experience it. So um, I, I do think that it, I, I like the fact that it's vacuum sealed by CGC for sure, but in some ways uh, are you still going to be able to enjoy it on the wall there with in the, in the case like that, you know? Um, yes, I, I just think it's, it's one of those things where I can get a copy of it and just keep that one preserved. Cause I also don't want the, his, he signed it, you know, like, yeah. as you can see in the picture there, I don't want that to fade ever. So true. True. Uh, yeah. You know, that's, that's why I'm going to And if you're going to keep it forever. Yeah. CGC it, seal it. And then, yeah. and plus I figured, um, I mean, what one. means important to me might not mean important to my kids one day, sadly. Um, you know, at that moment, maybe I'll have it buried with me, you know, but, uh, to Your me, kids it's just one of those scenes. From right underneath you. They're going to be like, yeah, dad, we'll put it in the case. Yeah, we'll put it in the case. How much is oh, it Oh, wait, worth? we're going to burn you instead. And we can't oh. fit that in the face. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, man, super, super super sad that uh, neil is now gone um true true you know true goat he's just Absolutely. fantastic Raya! guys ray i'm so sorry we tend to do streams right around the same time of each other and i always feel bad um but because i would love to just uh, for the few times i do get to watch raya she's just absolutely a delight and just like such a fun cool person and she's so supportive like if you're a content creator, she's right there with you. You know, she's always supportive, you know? So I, I take every time I can and chance 
to say, guys, if you haven't already, go subscribe to Raya. She's fantastic. She's wonderful. She has a wonderful gaming channel and movie review channel. She's just truly amazing. Like she, she doesn't get enough credit for how awesome of a content creator she is. So stop wasting time. Go subscribe to her channel. She's the best. Seriously. Um, Corey. Whew. Okay. Now that I got the, the Neil stuff out of the way, let's go ahead and go into our main topics for the show tonight. Absolutely. Rest in peace, Neil. Yeah. Thank you guys. I, I appreciate seeing you guys all do that for, for Neil. Cause that, like you said, that, that one, I mean, Denny O'Neill passed away just a year ago as well. So like, you know, it, just... hurt, it, it hurts for sure. Like he was, uh, you know, great comic book writer so and drawer. So true well, inspiration, uh, man. Yep. Yeah. But as we, when, <laughs> sorry, what were you going to say? They're, they're, you're not going to have comics like that ever again, you know? In, in no, I mean, he, he really, I mean, and I loved an interview he did where he was just like, I didn't, I didn't change comics. He's just like, if anything, I went back to the original source because we all know Batman in 1939 with Bob Kane and Bill Finger, you know, they, they had a very dark story. And then in the, 60s because of the adam west show they made him more lighthearted and family oriented and, and kind of silly which nothing wrong with that it was it was great for what it was and then in the 70s with denny o'neill and uh, neil adams taking back over they they brought it back to what everyone knew of batman uh and now into this trajectory you know trajectory of the dark knight returns the new 52 the rebirth series uh and on of just all the great tales we've gotten since neil adams and partly because of that decision to go back to the source of the comics which was which was really really cool um but yeah, just just a true legend. So, guys, as we get into our next topic of today, man, Jay Liva. If you guys don't know who Jay Liva is, one, what the hell are you doing? Jay Liva is a famous, you know, storyboard artist, a director for a lot of the DC animated stuff, and he's done other things on Netflix, uh, and he's worked a lot with Zack Snyder. He is just a cool dude, and I love Corey. He calls people out on Twitter a lot. <laughs> you know anyone who's talking mad bs or just kind of silly you know nonsense jay liva is gonna message that dude and be like yeah that's not true you know like when it was stuff about the snyder cut and people were saying like oh zach didn't finish it or you know they were talking about oh well ben affleck's batman sucked you know like there was you know nothing you know he wasn't working on any film and he's just like uh he finished the script and it was freaking amazing and now he released he released a lot of storyboards recently of man of steel batman v superman zack snyder's justice league some other cool stuff uh but he released this storyboard recently of deathstroke and i just love the detail on the sword that you can see batman's reflection in it and it's like man it just makes me really 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 stop me when i make my point really 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 wish we got the Batfleck movie. And you know what? I, I ain't going to stop hoping. I know some people are like, dude, you said he was done. Okay. He said that before and he came back for Zack Snyder's Justice League. He came back for the Flash. You know, he'll he'll come back again. You know, I truly believe that if they restore the Snyderverse, Ben Affleck will be back to work with Zack Snyder again. So hashtag make the Batfleck movie all the way because I believe... It's a multiverse. We can have many Batman. I can't wait to see what they do with the sequel of Matt Reeves, the Batman. You know, I think that's going to be, uh, I think it's going to be way better than the first one. And I don't think the first one was awful. I just think the potential in the sequel of the Batman is going to be really, really good. Uh, but yes, hashtag make the Batfleck movie, hashtag make the Deathstroke movie with Joe Manganiello, all that stuff. That line sounds familiar, laughing my ass off. <laughs> Jesus, Deadpool. Uh, but yeah, so, sign me up for for whatever they got going on because some of the storyboards that we've seen from <coughs> the Batfleck movie with the whole Death Shark fight scene kind of mirroring what happened in the Arkham Origins trailer, like, sign me up. Sign me up. Can't wait. The storyboards look great. Corey, let's go to our next topic. We're, we're going to breeze through some stuff today because it's May the 4th and I want to play some Star Wars stuff. Guys, apparently... <laughs> according to variety amanda waller spinoff show is in the works is in the development 
over on Warner Brothers Discovery. Uh, now they keep calling it a Peacemaker spinoff. I haven't seen Peacemaker. Go figure. <laughs> Why is that, Trey? I like John Cena. I don't like what James Gunn did with uh, his DC stuff. I hated Suicide Squad. So that's why I damn I, I hated Suicide Squad partly because of what they did to Amanda Waller. So I'm curious to see what the spinoff is going to be. But Viola Davis uh, is in talks to star as Amanda Waller in a Peacemaker spinoff series, according to Joe Otterson. Uh, she is eyeing her return as Amanda Waller with her own spinoff series. So it'll be mainly focused on her. Uh, we don't know the title yet. We don't know much, really anything, or when it's going to go in production or when this show is looking to to happen on HBO Max. But I guess it's like uh, the Batman spinoff with Colin Farrell, you know, the Penguin in that Arkham show. This is one of the new shows that is going to be developed on HBO Max, along with that second season of Peacemaker. So I don't know, Corey. You have seen the first Suicide Squad movie that David Ayer did, and you did see the new Suicide Squad movie with James Gunn. Personally, I think Viola Davis is a perfect Amanda Waller. I think she's just been done dirty, especially in the last Suicide Squad film. Are you, how are you feeling? You want to see it? No. No, no interest. No, no interest whatsoever. Okay. Uh, if it was directed at the showrunner was David Ayer. No, not interested. Not interested. Not even with David Ayer coming no. back. No, no, I'm not really interested. I, I guess. I, like David Ayer with the Suicide Squad, yeah. you know, with Will Smith and the you know releasing the air cut. If David Ayer somehow came back and said he's in control of this Amanda Waller show, you would still be like. And this nah. could be my lack of uh, knowledge of. Uh, you know, all things Suicide Squad. You know, I didn't really follow that as much. Um, but what what more is Amanda Waller going to be doing? Well, see, that's the interesting part. I think if it's just Amanda Waller, clearly, I mean, it, it, I think it has to be a Suicide Squad thing then, you know? Like, it because really her by herself, now she has been a secret agent, but I don't think Viola Davis is going to be the the secret agent side that Amanda Waller is. I think she's going to be leading the task force X and stuff like that. Um, so I'd be curious to see what they do. I mean, it could be a cool show, especially if they do it right. If they make it comical, like they made her in suicide squad, then, then I have no interest. You know, I, it's just like, to me, if, if they're going to do Amanda Waller, they got to get to the nitty gritty. They have but to be, is she worthy of a spinoff even from the air side of things? I don't think so as well. I thought she was great in the air cup. I'm she sorry. Was, I haven't seen the air cup, but in the, the, the 2016 suicide squad, she was a great, great character in it. I don't see her being a spinoff worthy character. That's Dead, fair. And that's where I say, I'm not sure Dead exactly shot. if she's going to be the focus because it doesn't really make sense to make no, her but, the but focus. Exactly. That's why this can't be just her, you know, a dead shot, uh, uh, a spinoff, a, you know, uh, it, still, yeah, still. just, a, just about everybody, every, everybody else would have been more interesting than her. In my wow. opinion. Well, I mean, she clearly is is a is a dark minded lady, and she just is very ruthless. And it's kind of in that way, like kind of like Batman, right? Like Batman's a badass because he's a human, and he's going up against these demigods, these these supernatural beings, and he's holding his own. Amanda Waller is kind of the same way, right? Like she has no powers other than she is a manipulating and controlling, and just. Na just mean lady right who is just she, she has no moral code really like she's like yeah i'm gonna blow your brains out you know if you don't do what i say mm -hmm. and i i think that's very interesting because like yeah i mean her manipulating these super beings to work for her and to do what she wants like i think that's intriguing so i think that could be fun i just think if they make it comical like peacemaker then it's gonna it's gonna take away from her ruthlessness that I'm like I'm not interested. I, I in. guess here's here's how I see it. I feel like it's going to be a Marvel Agents of Shields, um, but not executed. Mm, if that's the case, you well. already signed me out. 
Yeah, and not even execute nearly as well as Marvel did. Okay. Because Marvel okay, well, still made it seven seasons. Man, don't want to show if it's rated R. Well, I mean, technically, Peacemaker is rated R, but that's why I say the tone is going to be everything. Like, it doesn't need to be no comedy, no jokes, but it needs to be tasteful, right? Not, not like making fart jokes every five freaking seconds and dick jokes because that's how you get R rating. You know, like, it, I hate to use the examples of Peacemaker, but like, if it's like Peacemaker, don't sign me up. I would see I would, it if I would there. say this the Penguin is more worthy of a spinoff than Amanda Waller. Okay. That, I mean, hey, Colin Farrell killed it as Penguin, you know, and. When I saw the this video clip of them putting you know the prosthetics and the makeup on him and stuff like that to to make him look like he does and like man it is incredible the transformation so like yeah I'm I'm excited for a Penguin. Thanks, Yellow Devil. He said Corey speaks the truth. Comic Waller is good. Movie Waller isn't show worthy yet. I exactly that's fair. And, and you know, I, to me, it just all depends on how they do it. I think if it's literally called Waller, I'm not sure if that's the movie. I mean, if they called it. I don't know. I mean, if they just simply called it Task Force X, you know, and it's a Suicide Squad show that she just is the the front face and the leader of, then yeah, I, I, I'm intrigued, but I have to see how they're going to do it. Um, yeah. So yeah, so that's what's going on with that. A cool little spinoff. Hopefully they do it justice. I mean, there's not a ton of information to go on about it. It's just in really early, early pre discussions. But Corey, let's go ahead and go to our next topic. And this one has been kind of interesting. A lot's been going on in the DC world, especially when it comes to the TV shows. As we heard recently, the it seems like the Arrowverse is in trouble. Right, right. Uh, if you guys don't know what the Arrowverse is, I know Corey hasn't really watched any of it. And to be honest with you guys, I like I watched Arrow. I watched The Flash. I watched watch DC legends of tomorrow. And I did watch a little bit of doom patrol and I did watch the first season of Batwoman. Um, but it, I haven't seen star girl, you know, uh, I didn't watch all of legends of tomorrow. I kind of, I kind of got bored. And plus it was so hard. Like, you know, it was so difficult to like keep up with everything so that you could watch the multiverse event, you know, and stuff like <laughs> that. So I, I cut it down to like watching, arrow f them arrow versus kids yeah uh i cut it down to watching like arrow flash and i think just batwoman at the time when it was you know ruby rose uh and i just arrow i hated arrow so much he wasn't green arrow anymore he was basically cheap batman you know they they gave him batman stories to make green arrow cool and i was like what the hell Uh, like i really by arrow What'd you say, Super Bowl Court? Oh, did he? No, I'm fine. Can you hear me? No, yeah. did we lose Trey? Is the real question. All right, let's take a vote in the chat. Who hears Corey? Who hears Trey? Uh oh, I think Super Bro got cut down by. Hmm. Oh, can you not hear? I, I'm curious. So, who who do, are we? Super channel? Is that where we're at? Man, welcome everybody. Trey is gone. He's been kicked out. That's why I thought Trey was the issue. Wow, man, is it great to have everybody here? Hmm. Hashtag Super Channel has returned. Hallelujah. So what does that mean? Well, I'll tell you what that means. Question. How do we call? He gave us a signal.
can't be your Superman. I can't be your Superman. Can't be your Superman. Can't be your Superman. Your Superman. Your Superman. I could be a Superman. Damn, I love that shit. No, as uh, we wait for uh, Trey to get back, uh, I have no clue where he was going with that uh, DC cancellation rumors. So we're going to go over to uh, something uh, that I've been meaning to talk to you guys about. I've been getting very, very close to uh, watching uh, Superman and Lois. Um, I'm curious who all out there has been watching uh Superman and Lois. I've uh, been watching uh, a little show that uh, Bat Dan was uh, referring to a little bit earlier. Uh, <laughs> Smallville, uh, rewatching that before I uh, jump into uh, Superman and Lois. But I saw this article. Damn it. Am I, am I good? Am I back? You are back. Can you hear unfortunately. me? You're messing with me now. I know you're messing no, with me. No, you are back. No, but I am Where curious. Uh, about, though? I'll let you do your thing. Go ahead. No, Superman and Lois season two. They said episode 11 uh, ending completely changes the show. I've been meaning to uh, get into it. So I was curious if the chat, uh, if they're all caught up, if they're still liking where uh, Superman and Lois is going um, and those types of vibes. But uh, um, yeah, looks like... Uh, uh, Bat Dan, uh, Superman channels. Uh, I like Superman and Lois. Good, good, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The drone well. strike on Super Bro Corey. Uh, yeah. uh, Five minutes. Cool. Thank you. Beyond the Night says it's good. So, yeah, people are saying it's good. I, I, I'm going to get into it. That's for sure. Uh, but it looks like uh, Trey's back. Are you there, buddy? Trey. Can you hear me now? Am I, am I no. in? Trey. Yeah, you're messing with me. <laughs> yep. All right. Anyways, now, Trey, now Trey, that the bat channel Trey. is back, Jesus. Trey. No, I'm not falling for it. <laughs> I'm not falling for it. I, I can anybody Trey, hear Trey? I'm not falling for it. Hmm, Don't do I still it. Can't hear Don't Trey. Do so, you're such a punk. Wait, am I am I glitching? Corey? Trey. Oh man, Trey. I am glitching again, ain't I? Trey. Am I glitching? Trey. Let me know in the chat. Am I glitching? Because <laughs> I can't trust Super Bro Corey anymore. <laughs> oh, man. Yes. Uh, people are saying it's good. Jesus. Watch it, Corey. Damn it, Trey. Kneel before Corey. Absolutely. Trey is back. Yes, you are glitching a little bit. Bat Dan says, yeah. I can't hear Trey, and nor can I, nor do I want to hear Trey. Bring back Super T Channel. Hashtag Super Channel. I can't like you are glit now. You're glitching for me. God, oh, really? Corey, okay, right. you're okay. So I'm gonna let you, you have your moment. Still. I'm gonna come out real quick and then come back in again. Okay, okay, sweet. Something still... is whacking with my internet, which is weird because I hardwired it. Wow. That's fantastic. So it's still the super channel. That is what I like to hear. So Bat Dan, you know what to do, buddy. You know what to do, Bat Dan. Hit me with it. Hit me with it, Bat Dan, one more time. Hit it, hit it, Bat Dan. Bat Dan, I'm waiting for you. Bat Dan. Oh, time for a Jurassic Park segment. That's not a bad idea. Hmm. Yeah, we could talk about Jurassic Park. Uh, sure thing. Jurassic World looks fantastic. I'm actually a little pissed off that Trey never allows me to uh, be a part of those. Uh, um channel uh, uh, tv shows or uh, the uh, youtube channel shows he uh, never wants to do a trailer reaction view with me mm. bam thank you bat dan <laughs> oh man, that's great. No, Trey's having some major uh, technical difficulties tonight. So yes, um, I do agree. I think uh, um, Jurassic Park uh, looks absolutely amazing. That uh, trailer that uh, Trey just did the other day looks uh, fantastic um, as well too. So um, 
I will watch it quite a few times, that's for sure. But the uh, show that I'm really, really excited for is coming out in just a few more, I guess, technically days, weeks, maybe. And that's uh, Top Gun 2. So, um, well, looks like maybe. Are you back, Trey? Maybe? Maybe not? Meh. But Top Gun 2 is uh, kind of what I'm uh, looking forward to uh, here now. I guess not. Uh, May 26 is when it comes out. Um, I've heard really good things about it. I've heard uh, uh, some of the early uh, showings uh, said that uh, obviously Val Kilmer is in the movie. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how they um how that how they have him in there because obviously he had uh throat cancer or some type of um you know lung cancer some something along those lines where it's it's hard for him to talk so uh i've heard that uh val kilmer in top gun is uh uh super interesting as well so uh let's see here <laughs> Um, yeah, Trey's uh just messaged and said he's struggling hardcore. You guys are absolutely right. Damn, Hamada is uh going hard on TBC. Flavus Yellow Devil said, Corey, you can become his second wonder wife. Don't let the law stop you. The right to reaction videos is worth it. Cough, cough. Ain't that the truth? Let's see. Hamada must not be liking what uh TBC was about to say. And absolutely right. So, hmm. yeah, absolutely wild tonight, man. That's um, crazy stuff. So, hmm, what what uh what uh should we talk about now as we wait for Trey? Let's uh bring bring this up. Fix it here. Uh, get back to it so I can see it. Uh, now let me uh, exit out of that one. All right. <laughs> How much restored the super channel? He did. And oh my gosh, look, I'm a little blurry now too. What the hell? You know, he's uh, taking me out. Oh yeah, Trevor H. Mm. You the real OG, Trevor H. You got the super bro, Corey. Fly solo. Hmm. Let's see here. For that one, I'm going to rock it with so many choices. So many choices. We're going to go with. You know what? I realize he doesn't do enough um, Superman ch uh, super chats. That's a. Uh, that's the sad thing. So we're, we're going to give you this one. How did you get the house back from the bank? I bought the bank. Hmm. Thank you, uh, uh, Trevor H. That's uh, super nice of you. Tr while Trey's uh, running around, I'm just over here. Oh, my like... God. Okay, it's happening. Everybody stay calm. What's the procedure, everyone? What's the procedure? What's the procedure? Stay calm. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Everybody just calm down. <laughs> oh man, this is uh absolutely great. Um yeah, no, let's uh let's actually do something here. I've been uh kind of meaning to uh do a video on this with uh you guys, but there's uh like I've been mentioning, uh Top Gun 2 comes out here soon. Um let's see here. <laughs> Um, let me pull it up here. Come on. All right.
Nope, not going to load for me. Of course not. Cool. So uh, Trey says, well, my laptop is setting to an update. I will be back in one sec. Bat Channel says, thanks, Trevor H. Corey, what's your favorite non-Superman movie? Great question. Great question. Um, I would say there's quite a few, actually. Top Gun is uh, definitely up there. I absolutely love, 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 love um, uh, um, man. Um, let's see. I'm, I'm trying to put it in order. I'm going to say top five favorite movies. If I'm allowed to include series is going to be back to the future up there. Indiana Jones. Um, I am going to say, uh, top gun up there obviously as well. Fourth one would be, I do love the Lord of the Rings series. And the fifth one, I'm going to give it to Star Wars, uh, even though Star Trek is right up there as well. That Those are pretty much my top uh, five uh, favorite movies uh, for sure. Good, uh, good question, though. Um, I also really like American Sniper with uh, Bradley Cooper. I thought he did a fantastic job as uh, portraying Chris Kyle. So if you've never read the uh, American Sniper book, uh, that's a, an absolutely fantastic book. So uh, definitely uh, check that one out by Chris Kyle. Look at that, Bat Fanatic. Man, we are making more Super Chats with Trey gone. We're going to make this the Super Channel theme uh, quite a few times. I think we should just always have a Super Channel. Favorite band, Super Bro Corey. Hmm. Good question. I am going to say easily the Eagles for sure. Um, they are by far my favorite uh, band. Um, that, 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 that's a popular band. So obviously uh, the Eagles are by far number one. Who's my favorite? Eagle. Um, probably Fry. Um, Don Henley's great too. Um, yeah, they, they're they're all great, man. Um, Eagles Eagles are definitely the top top band for me. As far as uh, bands uh, that are not like uh, you know extremely uh, popular, um, it would have to be uh, Cowboy Mouth. Um, and if you know Cowboy Mouth, definitely make sure you put in the comments, hey, I know Cowboy Mouth, uh, um, Jenny says, whatever. Um, yeah, put, 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 if you know who Cowboy Mouth is, definitely uh, put them uh, in the chat um, that you know them. Uh, great band. They're out of Louisiana. Fred LeBlanc, he is a fantastic uh, drummer, and he uh, literally beats the hell absolute hell out of the drums he's center stage and you know we just haven't had this much fun in such a long long time and he's just pounding the drums sweats flying all over the place typically my goal is to get to the very front of the stage so or not to the stage but uh to, to the very front row first row for sure i'm there typically center stage uh tr getting you know yeah there's probably a lot of sweat flying on you and everything like that um uh, but uh, Cowboy Mouth uh, is definitely a great band. Uh, I think for that one, I feel like I have to give you a little taste of Cowboy Mouth. Um, let's do... Um, we'll do, uh, I think, uh, if I can find it real quick... There's a uh, concert uh, of Cowboy Mouth on uh, that uh, performed live on Access TV, and uh, uh, I, I, I was actually there uh, front and center. So I think for this one, let me unload it up here. All right, we're gonna get it here and gonna share screen. It's a little bit difficult doing this all by yourself, though, for sure, trying to get uh, all these uh, things going. So, yeah, let's uh, get it there. We'll make it a um, bigger screen there. And uh, let's see. 
I think this should work now. One, two, one, two, so if you look, if you look, you'll see uh, me. Can you hear the song, Trey? Okay. So uh, this is uh, Fred LeBlanc, and he's being the hell of a jump. Uh, Griffith Thomas right there. Uh, Everybody Loves Jill is this song. Um, and uh, we, we were just loud and out at the show. And if you see, I'm literally going to be right in front of the bass drum. Uh, just going freaking absolutely nuts. Uh, yeah, no, that's uh, definitely uh, my... Uh, Eagles and uh, this one is definitely my uh, favorite band for sure. So um, I'll stop playing uh, Cowboy Mouth now. The next question we had before we bring Trey back is a uh, favorite comedian. That is also a fantastic question. Um, I'm going to say, so I like, I like uh, controversial comedians uh, for sure. Um, I would have to say for me, um, a few of my favorite comedians are Sam Kinison. Uh, he's up there uh, for sure. Um, I do love Dave Chappelle. Dave Chappelle is absolutely fantastic. Um, who else uh, is out there? Um, uh, gosh, there's uh, one more that I'm uh, forgetting about. What about you, Trey? Let's uh, give you a chance. Uh, who's your favorite comedian? First off, sorry guys that the the internet has I don't even know. To, like today I even felt like I got myself hardwired in so I should be good and then <laughs> just dropped it like uh, uh, it's always irritating when that shit happens. So I apologize that uh, my internet or Hamada or Warner Brothers, I don't know. Someone doesn't like me. Someone doesn't want me to talk. They ain't going to stop me though. But thank you so much for, for waiting for me. And uh, for, it looks like Corey was getting the super chats, man. You know, it actually went uh, very well. Oh, and Don Rickles. Don Rickles is the other uh, comedian. So Sam Kinison, uh, Don Rickles, uh, and uh, Dave Chappelle are, and I do like Joe Rogan uh, here as well. Mm, uh, some Rogan. of his stuff is uh, pretty funny um, as well as his comedy. I was also a very big fan of Carlos Mencia. Uh, dee, 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 you know, uh, but uh, he uh, got caught with uh, a lot of uh, uh, kind of copying jokes and stuff like that. And that kind of oh, goes I didn't back. Know that. He, he got caught out by actually Joe Rogan, who said that they uh, stole some George Lopez uh, jokes and stuff like that. I think oh. the biggest thing that, um, you know, you think about that. Yes, making your own content is extremely important. But on the yeah. flip side, too. You know, kind of like songs, you're, you're eventually you're going to repeat the, you know, a similar, you know, line. So, or or chord um, progression, you know. So, it, you know, it, it's tough for sure. So, Oracle Clock Tower, thank you very much. If you uh, know thank any you. of those comedians as well, make sure you, uh, um, uh, you know, say which one's your favorite. But I think for that one. I feel like uh, we have to go with something that was kind of funny, not kind of funny. We're going to go with this one. But yes, Trey, I have to say, I'm super glad you're back. Thank you so much for the uh, um, uh, super chats. My boy, Trevor H., he hit me with that uh, uh, 999 one, Bat Fanatic with a $5 one, and Oracle Clock Tower with a 499 one. I uh, truly appreciate uh, all uh, what, of what uh, you guys do for us, and uh, you guys allowed me to fool around for, you know, 15 minutes uh, as uh, Trey uh, tried to figure out his computer uh, side of thing. Corey, would you cast Megan Fox as a third Bat Channel host? Absolutely. 
Trey, he's <laughs> back. TBC, Trey is back. Trey seen Fallout Boy covers for the next hour. <laughs> Great choices, Super Bro. Thank you. Yes, I like you too, Trey. I am glad means, you're Sarah, back. That means a lot. because I'm, I'm glad irritated. you're back. Because, no, no, seriously, uh, this is uh, one of those shows, you know, as we've told fans before in the, the chat before, Wednesday night is a tough night for us. Uh, it is. We're, we're both busy. We're both at work uh, going crazy and stuff like that. And uh, you go into the office on Wednesday. Wednesday today was full of meetings and busy for me as well. Same. So you happen to cut out on a slide and you know typically before these live shows on these on wednesday nights i don't have much time to prepare so the slide that you uh left me on but it was so, the the part i didn't tell you anything about yeah i have no <laughs> clue what's going on cancellation rumors who the heck is uh captain america woman in the middle that woman <laughs> below who the heck are the wonder twins you know what what are these I know who they are. I just don't know what the heck, you know, is going on in their uh, in their universe or for their yeah. television shows. So you left me at a horrible time. I apologize. I was, I was thinking about switching forward to uh, the Amber Heard thing because I knew a little bit about that. But mm. I was like, oh, that's the one that we should wait for Trey to get back. So, yeah. Super so- glad you're here. It's totally tough uh, doing uh, both uh, – coming up with a uh, content to say and uh, trying to figure out, I'm pretty sure we talked about Top Gun. We talked about a uh, few, few different things, but uh, yeah, man, pretty wild. Well, sp- speaking of Top Gun real quick, uh, I had coworkers that attended uh, CinemaCon and mm-hmm. saw the live screening of Top Gun Maverick. And I know some things I can't say them. All I can say is, People were cheering throughout the entire film. People said you didn't need to see the first one to appreciate this one. They bring it back in the film. Lots of tears, but a lot, lots of applause. So 2022 is a year of fan service movies. Isn't Agreed. that, man, I, you know, thanks for Star the side of guy. I appreciate it. I was trying to figure out uh content uh, real quick. So <laughs> Phil, Corey, <laughs> Phil. Right. No, I appreciate you do see that's, that's why you're the the best co-host ever. Cause when shit like that goes out and like I said, like my thing, not only did my connection drop, but then my laptop decided to, <laughs> it was time to do uh, an update and it took forever. <laughs> thank you, Trevor H. Thank you, buddy. And thank you again yeah. for that. Thank uh, you guys. So, but yeah, to, Top Gun two guys, it's going to be a damn good film. Uh, people said it was phenomenal. Like, Co-workers who liked the first Top Gun but aren't like Top Gun crazy were even like it was a phenomenal film. So that says some shit. So I'm definitely getting my tickets for Top Gun. Hmm. Um, so and you you should too because we're gonna we're, we should do a watch party for Top Gun. We already said that, and we need to figure out when because if 26 is when it comes out, we need to do it. Sometime. Yeah, we need to do it soon. So we'll, I'm we'll figure thinking. It out. I'm thinking the week of uh, the 14th and 15th since the week of the 21st. Unfortunately, I'll be I'll be have town. <laughs> ah, and I don't know if I'll have a good connection. I'll be in the cabin because it's my wife's birthday that weekend. <laughs> Ooh. We'll see though. It'll, we'll see how we can make that work. Um, but guys, Captain Red, oh dude, how's it going, my man? It's good hmm. to see you. I know, I know, we just saw each other, but it's good to see you, buddy. Uh, watched. Somehow it was made on Top Gun and it looked insane. I agree, right? Oh, bro. It looks so good. It looks so good. I was good. actually thinking about pulling up uh, the, uh, um, the that Top Gun video you told me I should react to. Oh, yeah. You need to. We yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, you should you should do it sometime, Corey. Uh, but it's but like guys, a 14-minute video, right? It's, it's a little on the longer side, yeah. But it's a wonderful video. I know you would freak out. As someone, like, I, I love Top Gun, but you actually thought about doing aviation as a career so you you're you're the way i am with batman and all my stuff that's the way you are with top gun and stuff like that so man that's that's a goal boom 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 (laughs) that's 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 a fantasy right there Corey. Uh, yeah yeah (laughs) guys so um we need a bat channel documentary on hbo max i wish that'd be dope hey man when we make it that big that Maybe that's when I'll know I made it big. See, Yellow W just put a goal in my mind. When HBO Max makes a documentary about this YouTube channel, 
then I'll know I've made it. <laughs> I should not hold my breath though. <laughs> Corey, don't forget tomorrow is hashtag make man of tomorrow trending event for Cavill's birthday. Oh, I see. I have, that's how busy I've been at work that I have no idea what's even going on in the trending events that I normally help out with. Yeah. So I'm he's excited. a uh, May the 5th boy, 80. Revenge of the 5th. 80. And then return of the 6th. 84. Something like that. 80. Whoops. Um, yeah. 83. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah. So I, I'm excited for it, but uh, to get back to our show now, and we'll try to, we'll try to get this back in rolling. Uh, cancellation and rumors. I heard. We, we already know that David Zaslav was going to go in and he was going to change some things that some of the old regime, some of the things they were working on weren't going to take. Um, and one of the things that it appears David Zaslav has really gone after is a lot of the CW stuff, the end of the Arrowverse. And honestly, the Arrowverse was kind of on a downhill trend anyways, but all things considering I saw rumors going out that Zantana was canceled, that Stargirl was canceled, that Doom Patrol was canceled, that Wonder Twins and, and all this other CEW stuff and other content that was coming to HBO Max was being canceled. So I did some research for you guys and try to find what was truth and what was fact. Some of it we already know is truth, right? Like Batwoman. Batwoman is canceled at the end of season three. It's done from there. Uh legends dc of tomorrow is going to be canceled wonder twins surprisingly enough that out of everything that is being canceled the thing that actually had some traction that like was had the team going they already got some actors they got a director involved it was already moving along canceled wonder twins they were actually supposed to start production in july so pretty soon Nope, they, they got the, the no longer happening message from Warner Brothers Discovery. So really, it's made a lot of people, and I think where some of these rumors are coming from about Zatanna and Stargirl and Doom Patrol, I think they're starting to, to come around because we're seeing all these shows get canceled that it's kind of like, hmm, what's next exactly? It Hopefully could not Smallville. <laughs> well, I don't think the Smallville thing would be canceled because Smallville was a mega hit for uh, God. What was Smallville on? Was it CW? Well, I, I don't think it was CW at the time, but it was something else. What's I can't CW? remember. I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's not hitting me. What was Smallville CW? Was. was it CW at the time? Yeah. Did it become CW? I thought it was something before when it first started. I don't know. Um, but I, I highly doubt that will get canceled. But in terms of uh, Stargirl, you know, we haven't really heard much about if they're going to end it on that final season. Um, but it doesn't it's the end of Legends of Tomorrow, which is sad. Uh, but Batwoman was also not granted uh, another new season. They're just going to finish it out. Uh, I would expect Superman and Lois to continue because it seems like that's doing pretty well. Um, God. the flash with Grant Gustin, I'm, I'm going to guess the flash show. I, I think I've heard that this is going to be the last season. I think, is it season nine that the flash is on? Yeah. And it's only gonna be like a 10 episode run. Um, so kind of, everything's kind of coming to a close and we kind of were expecting it right with some of these things. But as for now, the last thing that we heard about doom patrol is that it was green lighted for, I think season three, uh, back in 2021. So that's still going to happen, at least as far as we know. But I wouldn't be surprised if other projects get canceled soon. Uh, like possibly it. half of Smallville was CW. The first half was WB. Yep. Okay, see, I, I thought there was a, a transition at one period. Um, yeah, WB, I do recall. That's right, man. I forgot about WB. Yeah, right? <laughs> I mean, it's been a long time. Um, so... It, it's very interesting that David Sasoff is kind of making these moves to, to cut these scenes. And we've kind of heard from Mikey's son over at Geekosity with Syl Abdul Inc. in his YouTube channel that David Sasoff's goal was to kind of wrangle in everything, to have a connected DC universe, to not have a separate Arrowverse, to have, you know, something 
similar to the marvel cinematic universe but not quite to their own spin on it and obviously that being the multiverse that the flash movie is setting up um and also with all the different you know the batman and things like that so it's just very interesting that david sasloff already in his first month and a half is is making a big splash making his making his choices okay so We'll keep an eye on Zantana. I really hope they don't cancel Zantana. I haven't found any, you know, truth to the rumors that her show is can or her movie is canceled. Um, but I mean, maybe that was something with JJ Abrams that he was supposed to because he was working on the whole Justice League Dark Thing and Constantine. And we haven't really heard too much about what's going on with that. It's kind of reminded me of Ava Duvernay's uh New Gods project where she just really had the script kind of working on it and it just got dropped one day um so we'll keep an eye on but it is interesting wonder twins dropped when it had some traction in production we'll see what else gets dropped as it gets closer to production and as we get closer to dc fandom when we don't know when that's going to happen i think they're going to keep around the same date and obviously they're going to try to do it before black adam so before november uh to to really ramp up that film uh, but it is it is a whole interesting situation I, for sure. I do hope that they uh, do Zantana um, still as well. Zantana is a great character. And honestly, that's something that needs to happen at some point, especially like if they do like what they did with a whole DC animated new 52 film series that Jay Oliva had a huge part of that would be dope live action. If they, if they did something similar to that with all those films that were connected to each other with Zantana and Constantine and Batman and all, all that justice league dark stuff, do that you, would be super cool. Do you know where I first learned about Zantana? Where? Smallville dude. Oh, Smallville. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Yeah. When she showed up in uh Smallville, um, that's when, uh, uh, Serenda Swan is who played her. And, uh, uh, that's when I first found out about the Zantana character. Uh, yeah, I, I was super intrigued with her uh, back then. So mm. um, yeah, she's a, she's a wonderful character. I, I really hope that like hopefully they don't cancel that. But if they do, hopefully they don't drop the character completely. Hopefully it's maybe more of just uh, the project is not fully canceled. It's just delayed until the the setup of the entire DC cinematic universe is is taken to flight uh oh no batwoman come on i was already having such a bad day <laughs> do it just do it Somebody that that was honestly me dude when he dropped i was like oh shit somebody saved me <laughs> right yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh man so hopefully we'll, we'll keep an eye out uh but batwoman is done dc legends of tomorrow is done uh no word on super uh sorry star girl or uh the doom patrol show wonder twins is done uh but something tells me david Zasloff's not done yet with his cancellations mm. so we'll see um cory let's go to our next topic now before hamada tries to shut me down amber heard's role mira in aquaman 2 has apparently been reduced to 10 minutes according to grace randolph now you guys know how i feel about grace randolph i don't i don't i don't think she's always accurate um i'll put it that way i'm i'm honestly i'm not a fan of grace randolph I think I think I'm sure she's a nice lady. Uh, I'm just not a fan of her scoops because uh, I think she's wrong a majority of the time. But apparently she is hearing and now other people are starting to report it like New York Post and uh, even TMZ, which once again, I am paying attention to TMZ. But uh, they're saying, yeah, t 10 minutes in a 20 minute movie. That's a lot. Yeah. Um, you know that her role is being reduced because of the whole Johnny Depp and Amber Heard defamation trial, uh, which makes sense because apparently Corey, her signatures to have her removed the petition to have her removed as Mira in Aquaman two just crossed 3 million. Oh, uh, she's going to hurt the film. Yeah. So, I mean, they're, they're definitely going to take, it's kind of like the flash, right? Like at CinemaCon, they all were right. promoting. All right. All right. All right. All right. What? Three million people assigned this. Yeah. And they want her not casted in uh Aquaman. They want her removed. Yeah. Completely. 
Yeah, which that's not going to happen. So they're, so they're not going to completely remove her because it's like it's like Ezra in a but, sense. She's in the film. But let me ask you this. So, and I'm curious what the chat thinks. Do you think that that three million is a legitimate number to be even concerned about, or is everybody here going to go watch Aquaman two anyways, whether Mira's in it or not? Um, I well, I think people will definitely go and see because the the sad part is you can't you can't blame the actress for like you can't like completely ruin the movie because of her you know like if she was the main character like if she was Jason Momoa if Jason Momoa was in this situation then now you have a big problem it's it's the problem they have with the Flash right now right which is why at CinemaCon the focus on whatever they showed wasn't on Ezra it was on Michael Keaton's Batman uh-huh. so it's just it's just the way things are so can they probably tweak the film to where she's not a major role in it sure but there was also a recent uh leak apparently that aquaman and mira's son was going to be in this film you know that like obviously a child uh was going to be somewhere in this story but like okay if that's the case and you don't have mira involved in it a lot well maybe maybe that's how she's not involved is that oh she's pregnant or she has you know they have their kid and she's staying at Atlantis to take care of their newborn child. Maybe that's how they get around it. I guess, I guess, let me ask, ask this, uh, because, you know, 3 million is no joke. Is there anybody in the chat, if uh, Amber Heard is in this film, will they not see it? If Amber Heard, and you don't like exactly everything that's going on with the Amber Heard case, uh, case as well. If I paid attention to it. I've watched it quite, quite yes, in depth. And the que- my question to you, too, then, is is Amber Heard, if Amber Heard is in this movie, will you see it? I, me, personally, I, I probably would, because in the end, I really liked the first Aquaman film. Was it my favorite thing in the world? No. Actually, one of the issues I had with the film was Amber Heard. I it just didn't like her acting in that. Um, I didn't, I didn't care for her so much and and it had nothing to do with her drama in her personal life. I, I try to block that stuff out sometimes. Mm -hmm. Um, but Jason Momoa, I freaking love Jason Momoa. I I watched the shit out of whatever Jason Momoa is in. He's like one of my favorite actors right now. And I think he's just a lovable dude. Mm -hmm. So, and plus it's Aquaman, right? And like Aquaman was so visually stunning that it was like, yeah. Like, I, I, I don't I'd think I'd take that. it out on Jason Momoa for Amber Heard still being in this film. Is 10 minutes enough of a reduced, uh, reduced time that she's actually in this film to make the 3 million still see it? I'm not sure. I mean, in, in the end, there's going to be people who boycott the film mm-hmm. for, for Johnny Depp. And and that's completely your choice. Like you, Like, like you said you're going to do what you're going to do. You're going to spend your money, how you're going to spend your money, you know? And if Amber heard whatever, you know, your reasons you have, and you don't want to support her. So you're not going to support the film. It's the same worry they had with Disney and Warner brothers with fantastic beasts and Disney with pirates of the Caribbean, why they dropped Johnny Depp, you know, for the whole allegations that came out about that time in 2016 and stuff that, you know, they're doing this whole trial thing about right now. Um, (coughs) So it's a, they're both the truth is both of their careers are kind of mm-hmm. destroyed, unfortunately. I, I, I struggle with these with these types of decisions and stuff like that because obviously I'm not liking Amber Heard at all. She see uh, Necron put uh, Amber that dirty turd. That's hilarious. I, I I I'm I'm in one of those things where I don't want to support her necessarily, but on the flip side too. I, I'm not one of those we punish everybody in the class because yeah. one person did something bad and still want to support Jason Momoa. So I think if she's in there, she's in it. I do appreciate the Batman who laughs saying I won't see it. Oracle mm. Clock Tower says depends. And I, I think those are valid points as well. It's it's going to be interesting to see uh, what they uh, yeah. do. Um, I despise her but love Jason. Uh, Eric Patterson, I'll still watch it. Uh, hopefully they draw, the draw will be focused on the story, then the hate for her. Um, uh, 
Well, did you hear that Smallville is being released with another actress being filmed in place of Allison Mack for Chloe? As Alden. it should be, you know, and yeah. that, that's an unfortunate thing too. Like everything Allison Mack has done wrong, does that tarnish the legacy of Smallville? I don't think so. No, no, you know, absolutely not. And Allison Mack is a horrible person as well. Uh, never hashtag never liked Chloe. Who in this room <laughs> liked Chloe? I before I even realized she did all the stuff because I, I I didn't do research on it, but like when I saw season one, I told Corey, "Is like I don't understand why Clark likes uh um oh god uh why Clark likes uh Chloe Allison no Mack? Uh, uh, no the 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 one you love the one oh Lana why, Lana why she yeah loves Lana. I never understood why he liked Lana Lana was Easy. annoying to me. Easy. Want me to tell you why? Why. That's why right there. Look at her. Hmm. Kristen Krug. Jesus. You got problems. And look at look at uh, who they casted for uh, Lois Lane as well. Absolutely beautiful girl as well. So Yeah. Well, but here I think is the important thing. Speaking of, of cancellations with, you know, DC stuff. There was a lot of rumors going on, uh, you know, after the first Aquaman movie that Mira was going to get a spinoff. That she was going to get her own oh, really? solo films. Yeah. You don't hear those rumors anymore. It's it stopped pretty quick, which is quite interesting because even Walter Hermada testified kind of against Amber, kind of. And the reason why I said kind of is he said that they wanted to recast Amber in Aquaman too, but they didn't because but it was it, because of chemistry reasons was was what Hamada said that her and Jason Momoa didn't didn't quite click, which is interesting because I don't know how you can't click with Jason Momoa. He seems like a great guy. Um, I agree. Yeah. If, if, if she was the main character, I probably would boycott. Um, but, you know, in terms of the, the fact that even Hamada was like, yeah, I wanted her gone, but he didn't say the guy, but you know, it was probably Emmerich who wanted to keep her around. And maybe Emmerich was the one who was really pushing these Mira spinoffs. Well, now it's looking like um, my guess is guys, Amber will not be in Aquaman three. Yeah. I do appreciate uh, what Ellen Necron said here. In all honesty, I really don't care what happens in their personal life. It's still, I'm still going to see it. This cancel culture crap is out of control. Somebody save me. I completely agree. Um, you know, and and I, I, I do take that stance. Like I don't, I don't care about your politics. I don't care about yeah, your I'm the same way. Yeah, anything that you have to say as as a actor. You know, just shut up and entertain me. Dance, monkey, dance. Oh my God. They're people, Corey. Yeah, now, I, I'm only I mean, kidding on that part, but no, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I really don't care if, if you entertain me, I don't care what your politics are or what you do really, unless you're an absolute horrible person, which she kind of is. It sounds like they were both bad for each other. And it's, I'm glad they both they, did not bring the best out of each yes. other. That's for sure. I they mean, like Johnny definitely has a, you know, not a great past, but the the truth is at least what the evidence and the testimonies are now showing is that she wasn't a squeaky clean victim like she tried to claim. Yeah. And you but know. here's the thing though too, is there no road for redemption for Amber Heard? I mean, there's always well, I mean, it kind of depends on what you do, you know. Like, I mean, here's the issue that well, I mean, now we're gonna get into this whole case of Amber Heard and what has been said. I mean, there, there's there's certain things that has been that happened that is kind of messed up. Not all the money that was promised to go to the charities that she said mm -hmm. have not happened, mm -hmm. at least as far as the testimonies have said. So if that's the case, that's a messed up shit, and you lie about something like helping people who are depending on that donation. So that's a first step. Like if she is going to get out of this squeaky clean, she needs to, she needs to pay up, you know, she, she better not keep a single dime of his. She, she has some right, uh, wrongs, uh, to, uh, correct. Absolutely. Absolutely. And they both do, you know, they, they both have to, to hopefully get and, past this. And I hope they get into a good place mentally, physically and find someone who, but I guess in some ways, you know, and you know, since we brought this conversation up, um, 
Ezra Miller and Amber Heard both did some really awful things. Yeah. Some really bad things. Um, you know, th- that's what I'm saying. You know, it, I, I go back and forth uh, uh, with it. You know, yes. You know what I'm trying to say? You know, we're, we're all, you know, hoping that Ezra gets help as well. Obviously, hopefully they get help too, uh, Amber and uh, Johnny Depp. But you, you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, I hear what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, no matter what, it's a situ- uh, it's a shitty situation. Maybe a little more on Amber's side. <laughs> Pun intended. Uh, no, it's more on Johnny's side. Oh, well, I guess it is on Johnny's side. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry, bad joke. Uh, <laughs> but, I mean, no matter what, Aquaman is going to be hurt by this box office. Yeah, it, it's will it break a billion? It's possible, but now it has to be like a... F- phenomenal film but no matter what johnny has a following you have you can't deny that johnny has a a strong following they're they're gonna stick up for him and they're gonna stand by him and they're gonna boycott this film you know (coughs) you could say well trey aquaman came out in 20 what was it 2018 technically i think 2018 they were divorced and there was already rumors about the abuse and stuff like that like and that still broke (coughs) yeah but now there's like while that was rumors it's looking to be more and more true about some of the crazy things she did Mm -hmm. so people are gonna to go against that you know people are gonna stop that just kind of like you could say the same thing happened with the new fantastic beast film it's failing miserably at the box office is that because of the attacks jk rawlings has been getting and the controversy around her and the controversy around ezra possibly who knows do you think for zack snyder's just to lead to zack snyder should recast mirror or write her out recast there's i mean i love the idea of amelia clark from game of thrones she she looks like she would be perfect and mm-hmm. you know what you would get the game of thrones like if there's an easy solution to like revamp and like get people excited for the mirror and aquaman relationship put put two actors who everyone loves together Amelia Clark and Jason Momoa. You know that's going to happen. Like you know mm-hmm. that would be perfect. It's an easy solution. It's great publicity. It it's so easy and she looks like she could do that role. You know she can play a badass woman. It's 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 an easy deal, you know, to to get Aquaman back on the right track of publicity and the zero controversy surrounding it, you know. Um so that that's going on with Amber Heard. Yeah. Who knows? Sorry, but from my perspective, this kind of bullshit has consequences. Nobody gets a free ticket in this life when all said and done. Well, we both know that's not true, that no one gets a free ticket. I know you're not saying that, Dadpool, but I mean, look at, as bad as it sounds, look at Ezra. You know, he he got a pass on that last thing he did in the in the bar. Whatever happened, we don't know. I mean, we still don't know what happened. And that's why I still think consequences should be you know, fair and just, and everybody should do their, do their time per se. Um, yeah, you know, yeah. It, it, I, I agree with what uh, Deadpool is saying. Ma, super bad mom said Amber is an evil, selfish witch who thinks only for, of herself. She only, she did things on purpose to be mean and hateful to him. Do you think she will get Jesus and repent anytime sooner or ever? Uh, maybe, maybe, you know, there's I mean, is, is anyone the pa- past redemption? Who knows? Exactly. That's is for that, you to decide. Well, not, not for me. you to decide. Well, I mean, sure. Yeah. Um, I'm talking about the real end, end of life. Jesus. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's a very interesting situation. Um, but I would honestly say she's not going to be taken out of Aquaman too. It, it's like I said, Ezra, he's in the flash. He's not going anywhere. He's going to be in that film. What happens is after the mirror spinoffs, that's dead, you know, for, well, f- for, I, I think, I think this could be a very interesting thing too. If they recast or recast or reshoot Amber Heard scenes with a different person, then there's a possibility they could do the same for, I, for uh, Ezra in some ways. So um, I, I feel like this is something we should watch closely. Well, we definitely are. We're going to keep keep watching, find out what happens in the trial. No matter what, both are tarnished in some way. The, both their careers are tarnished, so it doesn't really matter. I mean, e- even if 
the jury, you know, votes in Amber's favor rather than Johnny's or the other way around, no matter what their perception around them, their, you know, their, their, their careers are tarnished. You know, they're, they're not going to be anywhere where they were. I mean, Johnny even said he's not going to do Pirates of the Caribbean 6, even if they offered him $300 million, you know. But look at look at uh, uh, Robert Downing Jr.'s comeback, too. Well, I mean, sure, but, like, that was also – he was much younger. Johnny's almost 60. Amber could, I mean, but does anyone think Amber Heard is an incredible actress? I don't know. I mean, I, I think people would say Robert Downey Jr. is an incredible actor. Crickets. Yeah. And and Super Batman brought up a good point. If they're only having her in for 10 minutes, I'd reshoot it. Well, I mean, but that's, that's assuming that as well. she only is in 10 minutes. I don't, I think if anything, they found a way for her to be in only 10 minutes, but she's actually in much more of the film. I, she's probably, honestly, she was probably a major part in Aquaman too. And they're trying to find ways to cut her down. You know, is it possible? Is it possible to reshoot her? Sure. But the amount of money that's going to go into that is going to be a real pain in the ass. You know, that's that's just the truth of it. And I, I don't think they're going to do that. I I mean, David Sazoff has already kind of said he's going to be careful with his money. So we'll see. It, it's a hot mess for sure. As my boy El Necron says, good to see you, El Necron. Hope you've been doing well, man. Which speaking of El Necron, our next topic, yeah. this one has me pumped and hyped. Godzilla Apple TV's plus series Monarch. We got a little update for you guys. Corey, can you go to my next slide, man? I am so excited, guys. First off, uh, while I'm bummed this is gonna be on Apple TV Plus, I mean, thank god I have that. Um, but I'm it's sad that Warner Brothers let this go and they didn't hold on to this wonderful IP. Like, this should be on HBO Max. But because of the theatrical release and HBO Max streaming day-to-day release theme, it, it pissed off Legendary, clearly. But Wyatt Russell, who was in uh, the Falcon in the Winter Soldier series, Captain America and stuff like that, he is going to apparently be in the upcoming MonsterVerse series, Monarch. This is from the Illuminary exclusive. They say the MonsterVerse is coming to the small screen with the upcoming Apple TV Plus series centered around the secret organization featured in these films, Monarch. This series with the working title, Monarch, (laughs) is set after the battle between Godzilla and the Titans, which decimated San Francisco, so just after the 2014 Godzilla film, and the world discovered the truth about monsters. Monarch will follow a family's quest, which I'm assuming he's probably going to be the dad, uh, to discover secrets in an unexpected legacy that links them and the secret organization. Mm, Curious. According to Apple, the series will be produced by Legendary Television and executive produced by co-creators Chris Black, who did Star Trek Enterprise, who also serve as the showrunner, uh, Matt Fraction, who did Hawkeye, alongside Safe House pitchers Joby Harold and Tori Tunnel and Toho Company, obviously. Uh, Hiro Matsuko and uh, Takamasa Irida, I think it is. Will execute, uh, will be executive producers for Toho. Toho is the owner of Godzilla's character and licensed the rights to Legendary for the series as a natural byproduct of their long term relationship of the franchise. So I'm just glad Legendary is being able to keep up this positive relationship with Toho so that they can continue the MonsterVerse in either way. Now, this Apple TV series, from what we know, is not connected to this sequel film that is going to be filmed in Australia. We really have no idea about it other than I've heard rumors that it's same production team with Kong Skull Island and it's going to be possibly the son of Kong as the sequel, which that that could be cool. I could I could really dig that. I mean, we haven't seen that since 1934, I think, with Marion C. Cooper coming back to do that one. Uh so that could be a really cool potential film. Um, not much is known about casting for Monarch, but giant freaking robot recently reported that Apple is interested in Kurt Russell, uh, for the MonsterVerse series. We did some more digging, uh, and not only managed to learn a few details about which character Kurt Russell could potentially play, but an even more intriguing casting possibility as well as involving Kurt's son, Wyatt Russell, which that's exciting. 
Uh, I'm, I'm down for that. According to our sources, Monarch is looking at Kurt Russell to play a character called Old Lee Shaw and is also eyeing his son Wyatt Russell to play the younger version of this character, Young Lee Shaw. Oh, this is interesting. Uh, Old Lee Shaw will be a part of the 2015 period after the attack on San Francisco. Young Lee Shaw is described as a military leading man type, and he would be seen in the 1950s, 1960s era, as would Bill Ronda from Skull Island, who we who we had previously reported this series looking to cast. So cool stuff. This looks like it's going to be just an exciting show that is going to follow, you know, and dive in deep into Monarch, uh, which to me, I love the whole Monarch thing, especially what they've done with the marketing for the whole Monarch when Godzilla was coming out and Godzilla, uh, King of the Monsters, you know, having Monarch kind of use like secret satellites to kind of keep track of Godzilla traveling the world and stuff like that. So Sign me up. That's going to be pretty, pretty cool. Uh, Monarch is the perfect part of this MonsterVerse to center a series around. The organization has been at the heart of everything with Godzilla and King Kong. The opportunity to learn more about the history and secrets of Monarch has a lot of potential for thrilling secrets and lore to be revealed. Monarch is not the only series set to bring the MonsterVerse to the small screen. An anime Skull Island series will also be debuting on Netflix. I have heard about that. Uh, not too much information has been released on it, though. Uh, the MonsterVerse is growing, and hopefully soon more uh, soon more about these new adventures will be revealed. So they're, they're kicking up the, the Godzilla stuff indefinitely. And I'm, I just can't wait personally, Corey, what's your thoughts? You, you're excited to see, I don't know if you know much of Wyatt Russell. I don't know if you've seen, he, well, he was in uh goon. You love the goon movie. Goon too. I think it was. Yep. Um, is he also in, um, Oh gosh, what's that one movie? Um, um, oh man, what is it? The, the Bin Laden one. Oh, are you talking about Zero Dark Thirty? Zero Dark Thirty. Yes. I don't think he is in that one. No. No, I think he's in something else similar though. So uh, but like I, I can see why you say that. I mean, he's a great actor. If you didn't watch him, Corey, in um, well, let's see, this is another Disney Plus series you probably haven't watched. Uh, but uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Uh, was like a, my, me personally i really liked that series and he was in it and he played the new captain america and he becomes someone else um but really he's just he's a great actor and i'm just excited that i mean kurt russell and him what's and his, it what's his name again it's uh what's his name the actor yeah wyatt russell oh first off i totally didn't even look at this skywalker the jedi my man Thank you so much for the $5 super chat, bro. I'm so sorry. It took me a while to think about it. I was reading the article and I got so excited about Godzilla that I didn't even see it. Thank you so much, bro. Guys, if you have not seen Skywalker, the Jedi's YouTube channel, what are you doing? Just like Rhea, what are you doing? You need to Skywalker is just, he's just awesome. He's a cool dude, chill. And he tells it how it is. He's honest with you. He never, he's never going to lie. And that's what I appreciate. I appreciate his channel. You need to check it out. He does a really cool stream every every weekend. And I think he, he does one. It's usually late at night, so I'm able to check it out. But he has a great, great show that you need to, to check out for sure. But he says, just catching the stream, showing love to Corey and Trey. Love you guys and keep up the great work. My man. Thank you, brother. That means a lot. I always appreciate it, dude. Uh, Corey, can you play my man Skywalker the Jedi something real quick? Just to, just to show a love and support. It is not a question of money. You see... I'm buying this hotel and uh, setting some new rules about the pool area. Yeah, yeah. My man Skywalker. It's always good to see you, bro. Um, so, guys, out of curiosity, for this Monarch TV show, which I'm definitely going to be reviewing, absolutely, because I'm excited for it. What are you hoping to see? Do you want to see more Toho monsters? And if so what toho monsters are you kind of hoping that they they kind of go in a direction where they can do their own thing i'd be be curious to hear what you guys have to say Corey. how about you i mean i know you're not as big as a godzilla fan as i am uh but what what would you like to potentially see from the show um man um obviously monster fights i'd like to see godzilla in the show uh hint hint uh first godzilla 
uh, Monarch reboot movie. Uh, how how long was Godzilla in that? Uh, um, I think that someone chalked it up to like I want to say like seven minutes or something like that. I yeah, think, I mean they clipped it all together. I, I want to see Godzilla in a film, right? So obviously Godzilla two, uh, we got him a lot more. Uh, Godzilla versus Kong, better again. Um, yeah, no, I just want honestly, I want to see the old monsters come back, dude. Like the ones that you don't, we don't always see. So, um, and you know their names a whole lot better than I do. Um, um, but uh, was it Rodan or uh, oh, yeah, well, I mean, Rodan was in King of the Monsters, so they're not yes. gonna have him, but I mean, some of the ones that I like, one of my favorite uh, Godzilla villains was Titanosaurus from Terror of Mecha Godzilla. Uh, I would love to see um, Anguirus. I love Anguirus. I, I would love to see a legendary version of Anguirus. I know he was technically, they had the skeleton cameo in King of the Monsters as well at Godzilla's lair, but I would love to see uh, a new take on Anguirus. I think that could be fun. Um, Megalodon, uh, Megalodon, yeah. Uh, Meg- Megalon, sorry. Jesus. Uh, could be cool to see. I mean, there's there's so many great uh, Godzilla. The smog monster would be dope. Um, Interesting. All new kaijus. You want all new kaijus? I wonder if they'll have some of the regular Toho monsters or all new kaijus. I think, honestly, I think they'll probably do mostly new kaiju monsters. So that way they don't have to keep paying Toho the, the copyrights. Because that's part of the deal. Is that they... I mean, that's why Godzilla didn't really have a lot of his former villains in the first Godzilla film. You know, they created that new Muto character and I, they could do the Muto prime um, that they've kind of shown. Uh, I would, I don't know. They, they could do so many great Godzilla villains that I'm really down for, for really any of them. Um, I would love to see. Um, it would be great if Godzilla was somewhat involved in it. I don't think, I mean, what's a Godzilla show without Godzilla, right? But uh, Gamera would be cool. I, I mean, that one, I'm not sure if they would ever do, because if they do that, you know, everyone is waiting for them to do a Godzilla versus Gamera film. Uh, I mean, I just hope at some point they all lead it to a destroy all monsters film with like just everyone, maybe a, a, a teaser to, the development of destroyer because i would love to see destroyer be one of the final godzilla villains um god i mean there's there's just uh ebra they could do um baragon uh varan you know this is uh what some of the chat's saying um keen caesar would be dope too if they could do a, a cool version of that let's yeah see. so uh Angiris, uh is Angiris. what uh Let's see. Uh, just give me more Gajira. Just give me more Gajira. Uh, that's uh, how you play Bruce Wayne. Maybe, the, may the fourth be with you, Skywalker. That's dope. Titan- Titanosaurus, my Taurus. man. You know it. I love Titanosaurus. Guy again. Okay. Okay. King Caesar. King Caesar. Yeah. I, King Caesar would be dope, man. It'd be cool. Uh, I would also like to see. Is it Man Manda? The he's kind of like the serpent dragon. I, 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 I just want you know what I want, Trey. Yeah, you know Rampage. Yeah, what about it? You know, you're talking I'll, about the movie that Dwayne Johnson was in, the yes. old arcade game, right? Yes, and you know the uh, the old arcade game specifically. Yeah. You, there was a Godzilla game that was also like that. Do you remember that, or what? Or was it? Or was it Rampage that we played where we were knocking down the buildings? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that was oh, Rampage. That, that was Rampage. But wasn't there a Godzilla game that we were playing back when we were kids? Oh, yeah. You're talking about, uh, God, was it Godzilla Save the Earth? I think, I think the so. The old Xbox game? Yes. Oh, yeah, dude. Yes. Oh, I, I played that too much as a kid. I have the, the new, well, it's kind of new, the PS4 Godzilla game they came out with. It's, it's not great, but I mean, it's... See, I guess what I'm trying to tell Apple TV Plus is don't halo this uh, this uh, this TV show. Make sure you uh, get us that those fight scenes. Don't get me wrong. I want some character development. Don't get me wrong, Halo. I'm not I'm not dissing you completely, but I want I want to see pretty much Godzilla show up just about every episode or some monster in every episode 
some fight scene every episode. Well, I mean, you know, the, the Godzilla films, you know, I partly, I think they, they kept a lot of the fighting uh, in a minimum at the first film was partly because they wanted to, to keep the budget down. I mean, just like Halo, right? Like those fight scenes probably cost a shit ton, but Apple TV seems like they spend a crap ton on their series. Like uh, the whole, uh, what's it called? Is it blind? Am I, I think no C the Jason Momoa series called C they spent a crap ton on that show. Um, so they're definitely not afraid to, to spend big for their stuff. And I hope they do the same for Godzilla because yeah, there, there needs to be action, right? Like I, I now I don't agree with, um, Oh, Adam Wingard Wingard. Yeah. Who did Godzilla versus Kong where he was like, we don't need humans at all. In their story, and I, I'm we need humans. Yeah, you know, I mean, part of what makes Godzilla great is his connection to humanity and either him as a villain and you know his unstoppable force of nature, uh, or you know, the the message that we need to get away from nuclear power and stuff like that, you know, I- anything like that. But Godzilla's story has always been very connected with his, you know how he affects humanity and how we affect him. You know, it, that's just part of the greatness of the Godzilla story is like still, I, you know what I hope. All right. This might be controversial for us. Godzilla fans. Me personally. I know a lot of people say, dude, if you're going to watch Godzilla, watch the original Japanese 1954 version, not the King of the monsters version with Raymond Burr. I love the King of the Monsters 1954 Raymond Burr version. So I would love to see them somehow bring in a reporter named Steve Martin. I'm going to say it. I would love to see them kind of redo that whole entire thing. Just sign me up for that. I would love for that because I I loved that 1954 Godzilla for film. That was the first Godzilla film I've ever seen when I was a kid. I think it was on TV one day on the sci-fi channel. And to me that, that was like one of the great, I didn't see the Japanese version until much, much later, which it's a phenomenal version and it's the original. Right. But like, I I do like the Americanized version too. (laughs) I know that's controversial amongst us Godzilla fans, but just, just deal with it. Just, um, it it is amazing. Uh, Skywalker, how the hell did they lose out on this series? Warner Brother did tell Legendary they were doing HBO Max Day and re, uh, date release for Kong vs. Godzilla. Those 90 ga- Gamera movies. Oh, were totally. Killer. Yeah, the 90s Gamera films. Yeah. Gamera, sorry. G- Gamera. Gamera Give films. Me all yeah. the monsters. Stampede. Yeah. yeah. What was it? Stampede? Maybe. I don't recall. I don't. I, that sounds familiar, but I don't I, know if I played it. I do want to see Goofy Baby you guys Manila. <laughs> Hopefully not. No, I mean, baby if Godzilla. they do it cool like they did in Destroyer, then then I'm down. I sign me up for that. Uh, no baby Godzilla. Yeah, I mean, no matter what, I'm just uh, I still laugh at the name Steve Martin. I, I know because of the famous actor Steve Martin, right? But uh, who's a great comedian. But uh, me personally. I do really like the 1954 American version. I was expecting him to say, I'm a wild and crazy, too wild and crazy guys. (laughs) But man, no matter what, sign me up for the Monarch TV show. I can't wait to review it with you guys. And hopefully when we get those trailers soon and more development on the whole Kong thing that's going on uh, for the anime show and also what's being filmed live action in Australia. Like I said, we don't know a, a ton of what's going on with that we just know it's happening and happening soon so we'll keep in touch if you want to know more godzilla content you know what to do just like share and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any godzilla content because we we're going to go hard on the godzilla content but Corey, as we come to the end of our show halo episode seven inheritance just so you guys know we're going to be changing our start time normally we were doing 12 p.m eastern uh, I have to go help my brother-in-law, uh, who lives a little South. Uh, I have to go help him move out because college is, you know, his college year is ending. Uh, so I have to go down and help him. And then we're going to go see Dr. Strange. So we're going to be changing our time from normal of the Halo episode seven review. It's going to be at 11 a.m. Eastern. So that way I can have time to get down there in the Colorado Springs area. So make sure when I post the video tomorrow, 
set your reminders. Okay. Hit your notification bells, share the video so that all your halo friends know about it. But more importantly, Corey, mm. as we talked about in our last halo review, we have announced our halo game party for halo infinite. We hope you guys can join us on Xbox. We have Corey, do you still have our uh, gamer tags posted or, or uh, set up? If you haven't, uh, you know what to do. So, guys, May 21st, Saturday night, after we do our Halo season finale review in the morning, hopefully at 10 a.m., we are then going to do our gaming party. So you can hit us up right now. Those are our gamer tags on Xbox. Send us a friend request now and just let us know when you send the friend request, hey, from TBC or hey, from the bad channel, anything like that. So that way we know it's not like a spam because I do get spammed quite often on Xbox from like people who are just like, what, who the hell are you? Send me, send, send me a request. We'll play Halo together. We're going to start at 9 p.m. Eastern and go for a few hours. We're going to, depending on how many people there are, whether it's going to be all big battle stuff that we do online we'll do that but if there's a few of us then we'll do some of the small team battles and stuff like that we're just gonna have a kick-ass night playing halo uh but my man uh captain rex my brother uh i know you haven't played halo in a while man i'm still crazed about your star wars collection that was just so dope some of the coolest shit ever um captain rex have you seen the the obi-wan kenobi trailer if you have let me know let me know in the chat because i know you'd be down for it my man um but yeah, so join us for the Halo Infinite. We coming in hot for it, boys. I hope everybody in this chat, I know, Trey, you need to make a uh, Facebook uh, event uh, for this as well. But I want to make this huge. It'd be hilarious if we, you know, instead of red versus blue Halo, we need to do uh, Batman, uh, the TBC, the Bat Channel versus Super Broke Corey. Red versus blue, <laughs> Super Pro Corey versus Times Valor, the Bat Channel. I'm going to, I need you, the fans, to help me teabag Trey of the Bat Channel. Good luck, sucker. Good we luck. We are, we going to be teabagging going Trey down. of the Bat Channel like crazy. You're going to need more than a weapon. His body is <laughs> just going to be flopping there. It's flopping there. It's <laughs> flopping there. Oh my God. You're, I mean, throw some plasma grenades at you and stick you bad <laughs> right and i think season two of halo infinite comes out what may 6th? today well no today? Is it right today? now it came out today lone wolf came out today i'm pretty sure did lone wolf come out today i'm hmm. almost certain it did right season two lone wolf and not only that we're gonna Corey and i are gonna be playing uh call of duty Warzone soon because they're doing their whole godzilla versus kong monarch operations thing uh, so I, I, I can't tell you how excited I am for that. Like, damn, I'm going to be playing video games a lot. So you might not see me on live stream for a bit because May 3rd. Maybe, yeah. So you're I'm, right. It did launch today. It did launch today. Okay. I'll have to check it out. But I mean, me going hardcore on video games lately, especially I got to get ready for halo. Uh, but guys, as we come to an end of our show tonight, please at the end of our video, once we've ended, leave a comment. So that way, it really helps our YouTube analytics that once our live stream ends, just put some of your favorite things that we talked about. Some things you're excited for. Like if you're excited for the Godzilla show, put what you're excited about. Let us know. Hashtag restore to Cyberverse. Hashtag make the Baffleck movie. Hashtag whatever. Or hashtag save this DC thing that got canceled. Whatever it is. Or hashtag rest in peace, Neil Adams. Whatever it is. When you comment on our video after it's ended, it helps the analytics like crazy. And proof of that is our last live stream. You guys made it go freaking it blew up. And we appreciate that so much, guys. Like, literally, we cannot thank you for all the help. It, we literally, we can't do this without you, you know? So the more support you guys give us, the more help by sharing our video, getting your friends involved and eyes on us. We're just going to grow bigger and bigger, and bigger. Our productions are going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And we're going to do all these crazy shit like gaming parties, watch parties and all this stuff. And then we're, we're going to have some cool people on our show soon. I, I've been this talking with some a, friends. This is more of a, more than a show. It's a community. Exactly. And that's exactly what I wanted it to be. So the, the bat channel, it's a bat colony. 
you know that's the truth of it and the more you guys help us the gotham guardians and the arkham adversaries we're gonna be big and it's gonna be because you guys stuck with us and helped us out along the way we're not gonna forget it so guys at the after the video ends leave a comment share the video like the video if you haven't subscribed notification bell all that good stuff to help support us we can't thank you enough i am your host trey with the real host of the show super bro Corey. you know what the reason why i pause right there is because i almost said i am super bro Corey. oh that would have been fantastic i had to stop myself <laughs> i was like you i am super bro Corey. <laughs> you are super bro Corey. you could be super bro Corey too chat hashtag <laughs> I am super broke, Corey. Hashtag, I am super broke, Corey. Jesus, that's probably gonna become a trend. Hashtag, we thank God I didn't say that aloud. <laughs> are super broke, Corey? Mm. Yes, it is becoming a trend. Hashtag, I am SBC. You guys, you guys are trouble. <laughs> oh, man. Mm, oh, it. damn. That hurts. That hurts. Uh, we are all SBC. No, Super Bat Bob. You're supposed to say we are all SB. Wait, we are a Super Bat channel. <gasps> a mixture. That's like fusion. Ha. <laughs> oh, Super Bat channel. That's Super insane. Bat channel. That might That might have to become a thing. At some point, mm -hmm. Corey, out of curiosity, do you plan on seeing Doctor Strange 2 at all? Multiverse of Madness? You're damn right I am. Uh, did you see Yellow Devil's tweet today? I know. Oh, Yellow Devil reached out to me. He's like, dude, you can, I saw it. It's awesome. You can go check it out. I need to hear your thoughts. I don't know if we'll do a full on blown review of it, but because we're not considered a Marvel channel. Yes, we are. I don't think Marvel fans will ever accept us because I'm called the Bat Channel, but I don't know. We'll, we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. Yeah, no, we are all super broke, Corey. And just to tell you how much this is awesome and how much mom is super broke, Corey, I'm going to let you read that one, Trey. Trey, don't you want to say something? What did? What were you going to say? Read it, Trey. Somebody say. Somebody say. God, I love it. Thank you. Mom. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. And even after all the craziness with our internet connection, Hamada trying to stop my channel, you know, and Super Bro Corey hanging in there, keeping the chat alive, because getting all the them chat. super chats. Thank you guys so much to Skywalker the Jedi, Trevor H, Bat Fanatic. Uh, who am I missing? I think there's someone else I'm missing, right? You said Skywalker the Jedi? Skywalker the Jedi, uh, Trevor H, Bat Fanatic. Uh, you said Oracle's Clock Tower? No. What did or oh yeah, an Oracle's Clock Tower. Thank yep. you so much, guys, for the super chats. It really does mean a lot. You guys are fantastic. Seriously, mm -hmm. and thank you for hanging out with us, guys. We'll see you next time. Don't forget to tune in weekly. Same super bro channel. Same. Wait, did you say same super bro channel? Mm -hmm. You didn't even do same bad time, huh? This is your show now, right? No, I'll, I'll let you have, man. I'll let you have your moment. Go okay. Ahead. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Make sure you tune in weekly. Same Smallville time. Same Super Bro channel. <laughs> See you enough. later, guys. Have a good one. <laughs>